I hope everyone is still with me. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're starting to wrap up this lecture. And so the last thing that I want to talk about before we leave the selections part of the lecture, um, which is like 90% of the lecture, and we start talking about the idea of layer masks, I want to show you how you can save and load your selections. And it's good practice to do because if you work really hard to, to make a selection, let's say of this lady's hair, and then you have to go back and you have to reselect it for some reason, it could take you another half hour or 45 minutes to really get what you were trying to do done. If you had saved the selection, then you could just go back and you could load it and then it would already be done for you. And so you can save your selection by going to the select menu and choosing save selection towards the bottom. You want to make sure that you choose that it's going into a new channel and that you name it. And so I named it face um, because I had the face selected. And then if you go back and you choose select and load selection, you'll be able to from the channel drop down, choose the selection that you loaded. And so if I jump back over to Photoshop, and let's go back to this image here. If I was to reselect this, oops, reselect this ice cream cone, don't paint on it, select it. I've got my quick selection tool. I'm just gonna quickly select it here. I did a really good job because the background is really different right now. Just have a little bit more over here to get. If I take my time and make this selection and I refine it, you can save it by going to the select menu, zoom in there, select, and then at the bottom you can choose to save your selection. You can chain, uh, save it to a new channel, and then you should know about channels because we covered that in chapter 2, I believe. Um, you can give it a name, and so I'll call it Ice Cream Cone, and select OK. And so now if I keep editing and I deselect and I you know, close the file and I open up another day, if I need to get back to it for whatever reason, maybe I want to change the color of the ice cream, I could choose select and then load selection and from the channel drop down, I'll be able to choose the ice cream cone that I had selected and now I could modify it, I could apply a filter, I could go to image adjustments, hue and saturation, um, I could limit my change to reds and then I could slide the red slider until I get the color that I want. Maybe it's Maybe it's doing too many reds because I don't like what I'm seeing on the actual cone. But you get my idea, right? You could change the color, you can modify it in some way because you quickly reloaded that selection. Let's close out of that image. And I'll go ahead and close out of this one. We're done with that lady. And so now let's finally talk about our last topic, and that are that is layer masks. A layer mask, this is a definition from your textbook, a layer mask is an editable and removable 8-bit grayscale channel that hides some or all of the pixels, type, or vector shapes on a layer. And it's non-destructive editing. What's great about it is that without doing anything to actual layer, you don't have to delete the background. You can make the background look like it's been deleted, but it's really just been, um, been hidden or it's disappeared temporarily. Some things to remember about using layer masks is that they're attached to a layer, and so whatever you do to the layer mask applies to the layer. And then um, when you are using the layer mask, anything that is black will disappear. Anything that is white will remain in place. And then if you use shades of gray, what you're saying is you want some level of transparency. And so we're going to start off with just using black and white, but then I'll show you how you could add some gray to create some transparency. Maybe you're on the edges of, of your selection. This is a fantastic form of non-destructive editing. So non-destructive editing is um, keeping your image, um, keeping the foundation of your image the same. You don't want to change the pixels. And so what you could do is you could save a copy of your file. You could duplicate your layer. But this is another way to use non-destructive editing because I'm not going to destroy anything about the layer that has the Eiffel Tower on it. I'm just going to make it look like I've replaced the background with another color. And then last, before I move on to the next slide, whatever you uh, make disappear, whatever you turn black on your layer mask, um, will create a hole in your top layer, whatever layer you have the layer mask applied to, and it will show through to whatever's beneath it. So in this example, my layer mask is around the outside shape of the Eiffel Tower, and everything that's on the outside is black, which creates an open hole, which you see through to the layer that's directly below, and it happens to be orange. And so there's really two ways to make your layer mask. The first is to make a selection of what you want to keep before you make the layer mask. And so in this example, I made a selection of the Eiffel Tower. It was active, it was blinking, it had the marching ants, it had the scrolling marquee. And the part I wanted to keep was the Eiffel Tower, so the selection was of the Eiffel Tower, not of the background. And then I hit the Add Layer Mask icon, which is at the bottom of your Layers panel, and it automatically created a layer mask. 
it made all the areas that were selected white and all the areas that were not selected black and the black areas create a hole that you see through and so if you look at my example everywhere that was selected it remains white in the image it's the Eiffel Tower part everywhere that was not selected turned black and it created a hole that you see through onto this solid orange layer and so anywhere you can see through which now is the background um, you were able to see the orange background show through the second option is to add a layer mask and then edit it. And so if a layer mask is added to a layer without an active selection, the newly created mask will be white and appear as if nothing happened to the image at all. So this image I've applied a layer mask to. If we look at the layers panel, I have a layer with the Eiffel Tower and I have a layer mask applied to it. It's that big white rectangle next to it. But white means you stay, right? And black means you disappear. So because it's solid white, everything stayed. Now, when you do this, you then have to go back and you have to modify it in whatever way you want to modify it. So you could make a selection and then you could fill it with black because black makes things disappear. Or what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to paint it back in. And so what you can do is after you create the image, you're going to paint with black, white, and gray on the layer mask, not the layer itself. And so you can see in this example here, I did not paint on the Eiffel Tower. I painted these black lines on the layer mask using black. And as I painted those lines, there's four of them, it created a hole that showed through to the bottom layer, which the layer beneath it is orange. And so as I paint black on the layer mask, orange starts to appear. So it almost looks like I'm painting with orange. But what I'm doing is I'm painting on the layer mask, which is creating holes that show through to the bottom. And so I just kind of followed along with my process here. And I basically did the same thing I did with the first example. I want the background to be orange, and I want the Eiffel Tower to remain in place. And so I ended up having to kind of rough in the outside. I just kept painting around the outside. And as I did that, you can see that the layer mask that I create matched what you see. And then I had to get a smaller brush, and I painted the edges really close. And so eventually, I will end up with the same results, depending on how I create it. So the first one, to me, is easier. You make the selection, and then you hit Create Layer Mask. But you could also go back, and you can kind of paint in the areas you want. What I like about this is I really like to use feathered brushes. or um, I want the hardness of my brush to be low, almost zero. Because as you paint in, you kind of get a feathered edge to it. And to me, it's easier to make it look more natural when there's not a harsh seam between things. So this is another example of a layer mask, and so layer masks can be used in a variety of ways. They can be used to create an opening or a window in an image to create a border, to combine the foreground of one image with the background of another, or to remove unwanted elements from an image. And so this is just another example. I have this image of the ice cream cone, and I want to change it. I want to have a bright, vibrant, blue um, image with bright, fluffy clouds. It just reminds me of a happy day, where the image on the left kind of looks like a kind of a dreary day. And so I made a selection of the ice cream cone and the part of the hand that I wanted to keep. You can refine that selection as much as you want. And then when I was ready, I hit the Create New Layer Mask icon. It automatically created a layer mask on my layer. Everything I had selected remained white, and everything I did not select has a black background. And black made the background disappear so that it's showing through to the layer beneath, which happens to be the, the clouds image. Now one of the biggest benefits of this is that now I have a layer mask that's showing through the background and I could take the, instead of merging these two onto the same layer, I have a separate layer for my background and I can drag it back and forth until I have the, the clouds in the exact position that I want. And so in this example here you can see that I have one cloud pattern in this image and if you look closely it's a different cloud pattern in the right hand image and I think aesthetically I kind of like the second image better than the first image but it allows me the ability to kind of test different options. And so this is another example of how you could use a layer mask. So I have this image of, I just pulled this off the internet, I used the Creative Commons search for, for the example. And I have this image, the black part is just the background and canvas, what the color part is your actual image. And I decide that I want to put some sort of border on it. And so I do not want to override the pixels, I don't want to destroy the pixels on the round side of the image, but I do want to put a border. And so what I did was I created a document that has two layers. I'm going to end up with an orange border, and I have a background. And so the orange layer is sitting right on top of the background. And so if I was to turn the eyeball and make both layers visible, I wouldn't be able to see any of the background. 
To make the selection, or to make the border, I made a selection. And I made a selection of the inside area of the picture that I wanted to keep. But I know that I'm trying to make a border. And so whatever is selected, you will keep. And whatever is not selected will disappear. And so if I want to keep the border on the background, on the outside, I had to invert my selection. I went to the Select menu, and I chose Inverse. And so now I have all the border selected and the inside, even though it kind of looks selected, it's not selected. And so when I go to the Layers panel, I still have a solid orange layer, but if I hit the Create New Layer Mask icon, this one right here, it will automatically create a layer mask. The area I had selected, which was white, will remain visible. And then the area that I had not selected will turn black on the layer mask, which creates a hole, and I'll see through it down to the background. And that's the second result that you get. Now again, the benefit of this is that the background layer is still fully editable. And so I don't like what I'm seeing. I, I can't see the fields or anything anymore. And so I can go to the background layer, and I can move it around until the part of the image, so this is what I had back here, until the part of the image that I want to see is actually visible in the image. This allows me to do some things like apply effects to the orange layer. And I applied a bevel and emboss effect via the effects on your layers panel until I got something that looked like a border. And I did this all through non-destructive editing so I didn't have to ruin the picture that I was putting the frame on. It's on its own layer. I didn't even have to um, worry about making the border go around the outside. I just made a layer mask that prevented it from happening on the inside.